Rebecca Dirks at Summer NAMM 2010 from PremierGuitar.com. We're here at the Hand Guitars booth um, where people have been stopping and checking out some really unique guitars, kind of some stuff we've never seen before. So uh, you're going to tell us about uh, what's going on with this, right? Uh, I build and design the guitars. Uh, this is John Anderson. John Anderson is a master of this material here, which is called female clay. And uh, this is a plastic polymer. We'll let him tell you about that. And what we've done is we've used entirely new materials on guitars that have frankly never been in action before. You want to tell us a little bit about the clay? Uh, the clay itself is very similar to what they used to make uh, pick cards out of. It's not a very terribly different from plastic, except for the fact that I buy it soft. And I studied glass making techniques, and I took those techniques and I applied them to uh, making this material into a two-dimensional art form. So it's a three-dimensional process to get a two-dimensional graphic yield. So as you can see, I can take a face and make it different sizes and different shapes. Um, and I can make this three-dimensional, two-dimensional, it can be carved. Uh, and the, we're doing things with this material that have never been done before. Uh, this is the largest application of it and the most uh, ambitious use of it so far to date that I'm aware of. Then you want to tell us a little bit more detail, kind of how this is implemented into the guitars. Yeah. First off, I've always wanted to be a musician, and I love music, and I love how ethereal it is, and it's spent with the moment. It goes away like smoke. It's nebulous. And graphic art is static. And I've always wanted to be able to have a part in that process, and by having a graphic presence on the instrument, I can have a presence on the, on the actual process of the music itself. And that's my main motivation, putting the graphics on. The graphics are made, to answer your question now that I got my spiel up, the graphics are made by, I will make one half of this moth here, this Luna moth, and it's gonna weigh about 50 pounds. It's gonna be about this tall, this big around, push it over, and then I'm gonna massage it down, flip it over again, I'm gonna massage it down some more until I get it to about this big. And at that point, the thing's about four meters long. 12 feet, we're in America. Uh, so the thing's about 12 feet long, but it's absolutely the same. Anywhere you cut it, you cross section it, you get the same thing. So, this, where is it? You can see I made half of that, half of this, there. Here, you can see this butterfly, or it's a moth actually. You can't see that it's got eyes and antenna and all that other cool stuff, but I cut a piece of that off at a larger size, and as we pan down onto the guitar body, you can see that I've used it for the collar on this screaming crazy guy with the horse coming out of his head. And you can see the little moth eyes and the antenna that form his necklace. Um, so it gives me an opportunity to really express the kind of music I like, which is Captain Beefheart and the really weird stuff. Um, and try to make an instrument that looks like Captain Beefheart music. And uh, try to make an instrument that, that looks like you know, things I saw on the backside of my eyelids while listening to, uh, to Electric Ladyland. And it's just uh, it's, it's a way for me to get involved and not be able to play guitar. How that process becomes a kind of finished guitar here, right? With this yeah. one. So, for instance, this was the first one that we did, which is why you say it is a strat. Not that I make stratic as it, but this just happened to be the first thing that we did. And so, it, the Fimo clay, as a clay, it's malleable until it's fired. Okay, just like making mud into bricks. And so, when it's in that form, the only difference is that we're picking up bricks that have patterns in them. <laughs> And they have patterns because he creates these things. So I'm able to mess around also with all of these pre-created chains of this material. And I can put it all together because it fuses to itself. So we don't have to glue the pieces. Before it's fired, FEMO actually sticks to itself. And having been a painter all my life, this is like having a pattern on the end of my brush. So I jump in and did the, this was the first guitar that we did where it's completely covered. And this is really what started it. That's why I brought it. Great. So you'll notice no seams, guys. And right. And uh, these are.
we can do these over and over, but every single one is one off, like it or not. Great. And you order these direct from you guys? Yep. Yes. Yes. Now you're also you want to real quick cover the uh, natural materials that you use? Yeah. This is working in uh, organic natural materials. I'm able to do this because I basically took off in the States in 68 and didn't come back. So I lived in Asia for more than 20 years and this is backyard stuff in Asia. It's not like going to Asia and ordering something cheap. It's like the hands are there, the material's there. So this is something, stuff that's really familiar to me and, and I transformed it into these guitars. What you have is you have coconut shell that is normally round but we cut it into a triangle, an elliptical triangle, and then crush that in place so that the cracks remain next to each other in the, in the resins, various things. And that allows us to make a flat, super hard material from something that was previously round. And sure enough, it has a lot of variety. This is young coconut inside right, of the shell. This telecaster here is a young coconut on the outside of the shell. Okay? And that's also, the whole body is coated in it. So you can completely see it's completely around the body. And it frankly looks quite nice with Canadian maple. <laughs> this is a, uh, another exotic material. This is a fern that grows only in Indonesia. And the center of it is a very soft pulp, but the outer rim around one inch around the outside makes these wonderful designs. And, one more thing. and this is this is cinnamon. Really? Really. Cinnamon bark is a tree bark. Okay, so it's wood. But you only normally get it in your Starbucks coffee. Alright? So this is taking the bark, flattening it out, crushing it, and doing entire bodies in it. Maybe the world's first scented guitar. Yeah. <laughs> These are durable, hard. They have nothing to do with the tone of the guitar because the bodies are solid mahogany. Okay. The mahogany, by the way, all of our mahogany is plantation wood. And we have beautiful ebony, also coming from outer islands in Indonesia. It's also plantation wood. Great. And uh, so these are available directly from you, and they're all one-offs, right? So do you? Well, they're one-offs. This is this is this is one-offs in production. Yep. Oh. Okay. They're one-offs because we make it by hand. Yep. We have a lot of hands. That's why we call it hand guitars. And uh, how much do they run? They're going to run retail from something like eighteen hundred to six thousand dollars, depending on how adventurous you want to go. Great. And if people want to learn more about the guitars, where should they go online? Uh, website hand guitars hand dash guitars dot com. All right. And awesome. we're looking for dealers. All right, cool. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is Rebecca Dirks at Summer NAMM 2010 from PremierGuitar.com.